And now for today's news. Pirates! Yes, are Pirates! Hijacked the ship carrying over a hundred million dollars worth of oil today. Somalian pirates. The U.S. and other naval forces decided against intervention of the seizure of the supertanker. NATO said it would not divert any of its three warships from the Gulf of Aden, and the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet also said it did not expect to send ships to try and intercept the Saudi supertanker. So the tanker was seized over the weekend at about 450 nautical models off the Kenyan coast. Blah, blah, blah. So here's the situation. We have $100 million which has been stolen. We've had five hijackings since November 7th. And it's only November 18th as of this report. The military forces we paid billions of dollars to go around the globe policing the world decided to do nothing. They refused to do jack unless it's us being stolen from. Why move a warship to prevent hundred million dollar thieves when we can simply pay our warships hundreds of millions of dollars already to sit there and do nothing? Nothing but wait for the next war that we start. So we'll spend millions of dollars to do nothing and allow millions more to be stolen repeatedly by these pirates <coughs> and privateers. But we have no problem firebombing entire cities starving to death hundreds of thousands of people through sanctions, bombing thousands of civilians, killing over a million Iraqis, dropping depleted uranium all over the Middle East so we can get their unborn as well. We have no problem spending billions of dollars to do that. But we're not going to waste the ship to stop pirates that are looting hundreds of millions of dollars from someone else. Imagine this. Imagine if an Israeli ship had been attacked and hundreds of millions of dollars stolen from the Israelis. Do you think the U.S. would sit on its thumbs then? Eh -eh. We all know what these Somalians are doing with this money that they have no trouble fencing through ransom. It all goes right back to the illegal arms market buying weapons from the U.S. and Israel. Big shock. And usually this weapons trade is covertly run by our own State Department, so no shock there on why the U.S. and NATO doesn't want to budge or move any ships about. We'd rather just pay them to sit there and do nothing. On with the other news. Mick Obama. Barack Obama, president-elect, has decided not only to bring in Hillary, but John McCain as well into his uh, fray. He's going to work with John McCain on, let's see, energy and national security and the financial situation. Imagine my lack of shock. They already had the same policies. The same that forever. Mick Bama brings in McCain to work on finance because they voted on all the same things. They voted on the bailouts. They voted on the Futures Commodities Act. They voted on everything the same. Hillary Clinton Go see my video, Mick Hill Obama. That's what I used to call him before Hillary was knocked out. Mick Obama was Mick Hill Obama. Because all three of them had just about the same policies. Hillary was a little bit different. They cast her out and they just had Mick Obama and Mick Obama. And now Mick Obama is president and he's brought in McCain. And all you people sitting there saying, we're for change. You can eat it now. That's the news. Now for the weather. You're fucked. On to finance. Uh, a lot of people ask me, why is the price of oil going down? Well, the price of oil has gone down in the U.S. because the U.S. dollar has gone up. See, it's a foreign product. So when the dollar went down, oil prices went up. Had nothing to do with India and China industrialized or anything like that. Now that the dollar is up, oil prices are down. Well, why is the dollar going up if we've got all these trillion dollar bailout packages? Well, this is why. First of all, the Europeans have to pay us back on all those junk bonds that were AAA approved, which uh, I don't know why the rating companies haven't been facing the grind. They need to face some responsibility there. They didn't insure them worth a turd. They were worthless. They sold them out and now they've got to pay them back. The bailout plan, hasn't that money hasn't processed at all. we got $1.3 trillion out there so far. we got another $25 billion added here and there, another $50 billion coming. And another 600 billion that the Fed just printed out. 
that's separate from the 700 billion that the Congress approved through the Imperial Senate. That money has only been promised, and they're debating now as to how they're going to spend it on what. Paulson pulled a nice bait and switch there, said they're not going to go into the assets. Looks like TARP's dead as well. But they're going to invest $250 billion, so they last said. The government, when I say they, the government is going to invest that in select banks. Which ones will they choose? Hmm, probably the ones they're part of, just like Paulson being part of Goldman Sachs. So the guys that set it up end up paying themselves. Now AIG and them uh, paying themselves bonuses so far, that's just with the money they know they've been promised. They went ahead and paid themselves their bonuses and the money's coming. But it hasn't been processed yet. As soon as that money is released, as soon as all those new dollars are released into the market, the high dollar is just going to tank. There's a lot of deleveraging right now and the Europeans are stuck. You've already seen the euro start to drop. The dollar is going to follow. As Max Kaiser said, it, the dollar is just the leper with the most fingers right now. The thing to have is yen and gold. So we'll ride this out another couple of months. They want to get their fourth quarter earnings. If they can even stretch it that long, the bottom will be pulled out. The trillions will be flooded in. The dollar's going to tank and oil will go back up. So enjoy it now while you can. McBama isn't going to do anything. They're talking about bailing out the auto industries. And his advisor, Ram Israel Manuel, a man I uh, hate less than Richard Pearl, I can say that much, but well, hmm, hmm. Well, he's advising to bail out the auto industries as well. So, welcome to the USSA. Not like I wrote a book about it or anything a couple of years ago. And here's another funny yet sad play on words. Paulson had the gall to come out and say the FDIC was about spending C, whereas the TARP plan was about investing. Listen there, genius. It's not investing, it's spending because you're investing other people's money, which you stole via the government. When you invest someone else's money that was just awarded to you, that's theft. And that's still spending, budget-wise. It's not even really spending, it's stealing. That's what it is. You've taken from Main Street, and you've shelled it out to portions of Wall Street. Just like the Morgans before, and the Vanderbelts, and then the Rothschilds, and you can go back in history. You can go back to the railroad cliques with Lincoln, you can go back before that with the uh, monopolies on the gold trade, etc. There's always something. It's always the same system. We're getting screwed. There won't be any change with McPama. I doubt he even has a clue what's going on. He's completely on board with the bailouts and more imperialism and threatening Pakistan and threatening Russia and whipping up the satellite states and the little color-coded revolutions. Who knows what the next false flag will be we got a very interesting year coming ahead of us. I hope that the Ron Paul and Kucinich and third party supporters and the anti-neocons and people who are just sick of it and the former Obama supporters who have woken up can band together and create a new media because the media is a meta issue. If we can take back the media, we can educate, then we actually have a voting process and system, maybe. But we can't do anything when barely anyone knows what's going on. Thanks for being with me again today.